with details on an upcoming WWE debut and more. This is Wrestling Rambles. My name is John and you're watching the Wrestling Report. Before we move on, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Rambles with notifications on and don't forget to like the video. Going over why WWE saw a reduction in the use of pyrotechnics, PW Insider noted WrestleMania XL saw less pyro than previous years due to cutbacks under Endeavor. There was talk of even doing far less pyro than what was used. Talking about the AEW Dynasty event and the match between Will Ospreay and Brian Danielson, commentator for the company Tony Schiavone said on his What Happened When podcast, Yeah, didn't we expect it though? Didn't we all know that it was going to be a great match? Listen, to me, Brian Danielson not only is to me one of the greatest performers ever, but one of my favorite people of all time. You can sit and talk to Brian Danielson for a long, long time about wrestling, just like you can with Chris Hero. Just sit and talk wrestling with them and just pick their brain and talk about the history of wrestling or moves or the business. So I knew it was going to be a great match. Will Ospreay to me has become like the, I don't know, I don't know how to describe him. If I say, oh, the greatest of all time, that would be wrong to say that. But I don't know anybody that has come in in such a short period of time and captured the excitement of the fans as Will Ospreay has, not only with what he can do in the ring, but his promos with the exception of some of the things he said, his promos have been great, wonderful. So I'm just amazed at him. Every time I see Will Ospreay, I say, slow down, dude. You got a lot of wrestling ahead of you. You don't want to kill yourself. He said, I don't know how to do it any other way. So yeah, the match was wonderful. I wasn't on the call, but Okada and Pac was wonderful as well. Despite no longer being under contract with AEW and making an appearance for TNA, Matt Hardy said this regarding his talks with Tony Khan's company telling Busted Open Radio, I will start and I will preface it by saying I love AEW. I love working with Tony Khan. He's a great guy. My contract ended up expiring. We hadn't reached a deal yet and we're still in the midst of talking. I have literally in the last week, I have talked to every promoter from every promotion that there is. Last night was me showing the pro wrestling can still be unpredictable. This was done in a couple days notice. We kind of started talking about this on Wednesday. This is when it kind of materialized over a couple of days doing some shots for TNA and a little story arc. Pro wrestling is at its best when it's unpredictable. I didn't tell anyone. My brother texted me this morning. It was late last night. He goes to bed super early. He's like, oh my god, that was great last night. How'd it feel to be out there? That was killer. If you want to keep a secret, just keep a secret. Just go about your business and do your thing. Following his loss of the NXT title to Trick Williams the other night, it looks as though Ilya Dragunov is leaving the brand ahead of the WWE draft as Fightful Select noted. Much like Carmelo Hayes and Braun Breaker, Ilya Dragunov received a send-off once he got backstage. Staying on the topic of the WWE Draft, another star that has been appearing on NXT even as recently as last night could be on his way out of the brand, as Sean Ross Sapp said. As teased on last night's show, Baron Corbin is expected to be drafted to Raw or SmackDown in the WWE Draft. At the after party for Swerve Strickland's AEW title win, Chris Jericho gave a speech and said this. Is that your first day? Yep. I was like, this guy's fucking cool, man. Like, there's something about him. And I remember watching some of your earlier matches. I think we even talked in Fort Myers. Like, eh, don't do this, this. It didn't matter. Matches are fine. I'm telling right now the most important thing about wrestling is character, charisma, persona, and the X factor, the cool factor. He had it from the start. And he's a great worker as well. And on top of that, he's a big thinker. 
Mm -hmm. He thinks outside of wrestling. He just performed at Rolling Loud, which is fucking crazy mm -hmm. that he got on that bill. Okay. It's amazing. And it reminds me of early Fozzie stuff. We're like, what? How did he get on this bill? It's because he's a hustler, he's an entertainer, he's really, really good at what he does. And I knew about six months ago, okay, this is our guy. This is the next guy. I would have done it two months earlier. I had armchair booking, but it worked out great. There's only been eight champions in AEW, eight different guys, some back and forth. He's number eight in five years. That's a long time. We don't change uh, titles to the world title very often unless it's the absolute right guy. He is the right guy for the job. He's got the cool X factor. And if I was uh, a big wig in AEW, maybe I am, I would put you on every fucking talk show. I would promote you in every single way because you have what we need, which is to, the ability to cross over into the mainstream and I'm super proud of you, man. And I knew you had it since day one. But a lot of guys have it. Don't aren't able to 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 make it happen. You did, and now it's your time. And I would push you to the fucking limit to the to, to the cows come home. And I'm gonna do my best to make sure that happens. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Posting a clip of Damian Priest telling J.D. McDonough and Dominic Mysterio that he doesn't need them, Pat McAfee wrote that Damian Priest coming out of the crowd. J.D. McDonough couldn't find a win if his life depended on it. J.D. replied, I'm sore, I'm tired, I'm pissed off, and I think I've helped Judgment Day more than Judgment Day has helped me. Recalling his feud against Roman Reigns during the Thunderdome era of WWE, Jey Uso said this to Gorilla Position. I definitely leveled up during the pandemic in 2020. There was no one there, right? It was literally Paul Heyman, Hunter, Triple H, me, and Roman Reigns. That's the most interaction I've ever had with them. It was more intimate than ever. Actually, we all learned together on how to elevate each other. We ain't got no people here. Now we got to bleed through these cameras. At first, I think the first angle that Roman was supposed to have was with The Fiend, but I don't think The Fiend would have elevated the tribal chief the way it came through me. It was just leveling up every single week. Asked about his current relationship with Eric Bischoff, who has been critical of him and his promotion, AEW President Tony Khan, told KNC Masterpiece, It's an interesting question. There haven't been that many wrestling companies that have risen to international prominence. There aren't that many wrestling companies in modern history that have sold tens of thousands of tickets and hundreds of thousands of pay-per-views. In that sense, Eric and I do have something in common. I do respect his accomplishments. He just has a show, a podcast, that is largely devoted to taking shots at us and a lot of it isn't rational or logical or truthful. I don't think those things seem to matter to him anymore. I do respect what he accomplished with WCW. It was a great company. In that sense, I do respect him. We're on TNT and TBS. That's something I have in common with Eric. There aren't a lot of people that produced a lot of wrestling shows on TBS and TNT. That's one thing we do have in common. As Cameron Grimes was shockingly released from WWE recently, the reaction from within the promotion has been provided with Fightful Select reporting, we're told that Cameron Grimes' release was unexpected by many in the company for various reasons. One was that his skill set and track record did not match with others that were cut from the company. While he'd been with WWE for five years, he'd gotten over in NXT and seemed to constantly improve in the ring. Another reason the release was a surprise was that Grimes was at last week's SmackDown and actually a regular TV even when he wasn't being used. For details on his working relationship with New Japan Pro Wrestling, as he is their IWGP Heavyweight Champion, AEW's John Moxley said this to Sports Illustrated. When I first came to Japan, I wanted to understand it and participate in it. That allowed me to learn and grow. I didn't come in and say, this is what I do and this is what we're doing. Everyone I wrestled, I learned from. I've really been able to grow a lot working with New Japan. It's been a mutually beneficial relationship. They get me and I get them. 
The shoe fits, so we kept going. We're still on a handshake deal. When it comes to a new signing for WWE, Ringside News wrote that the Anawa E family ties are growing in WWE with multiple in-ring athletes joining the company over the years with the latest addition being the nephew of WWE legends Umaga and Rikishi, Jacob Fatu. The former MLW heavyweight champion recently inked a deal with WWE as disclosed by his family members during WrestleMania 40 weekend, generating anticipation for his potential involvement with the bloodline upon his debut. Initial speculation suggested that Jacob might grace WWE programming as early as this week. However, according to a new report by PW Insider, WWE intends to take a cautious approach with Jacob Fatu's transition to the main roster, preferring not to rush his debut. Consequently, his appearance in the WWE draft appears less likely, with other sources suggesting that a meticulous plan is in place for his integration integration into the bloodline. As Grayson Waller recently took a subtle shot at AEW during an interview saying that WWE would be bringing good wrestling back to Jacksonville for the first time in years, Swerve Strickland said this in response to news for Jax. Obviously, it was a shot at AEW. Love these subtleties. This person that said that, congratulations on their championship gold. Amazing. You were awesome when you were watching me in the seats when I was being a champion over where you were as well. Happy to see where you progress to, but let's be real. We are the best wrestling not just in Jacksonville but anywhere in the world I stand on business on that Revealing the pay packages received by top TKO Group Holdings executives, Ringside News wrote that CEO of TKO Group, Ari Emanuel, received a notable compensation package valued for 2023. According to Deadline, Emanuel received a compensation package valued at $64.9 million. TKO Group, which encompasses WWE and UFC, began trading on the New York Stock Exchange just last September. Emmanuel's compensation breakdown comprised a 911000 base salary, a substantial cash bonus of $24 million, and stock awards valued at $40 million. Mark Shapiro, TKO's chief operating officer, also saw a significant package totaling $16 million for the same year. Shapiro holds an equivalent role at Endeavor. TKO's proxy statement filed with the SEC highlighted key factors contributing to executive compensation, including revenue growth, adjusted EBITDA gains, cost reduction efforts, successful UFC and WWE live events, and pivotal media rights deals, such as a long-term agreement with Netflix for WWE content. Commenting on the WWE releases, specifically Jinder Mahal's, Eric Bischoff advised AEW President Tony Khan to hire him, saying on his 83 Weeks podcast, not sure what to make of it, WWE's releases. But first of all, if I was Tony Khan and if Jinder is available and this isn't a storyline, I'd hire him so fast. Going back to the comments that Tony made about gender, that started a whole thing. I mean, it sort of set the internet on fire for about three days, four days. It was awesome. It was fun to watch. People are nuts, man. People are nuts on Twitter, and I'm here for it all. It's the most entertaining thing for me to sit down and watch some of these people go crazy. But I would take advantage of that. Take advantage of the fact, Tony, that you stirred up a bunch of shh by throwing a grenade, so to speak. It wasn't a grenade. It was a firecracker. A tiny little firecracker cracker which didn't even make much noise but boy did people react to it now you get kind of a built-in i don't know at least an incident to start from something a spark of an idea to do something fun have gender come in tony and make you fear for your life no seriously okay i'm having a little fun with it with the fear for your life shh, but i'm actually serious about you know why not
In a post on X, Soraya shared the third and final part of the We're Female Wrestlers video. We're female wrestlers, and all the neck bits get mad in the comments after we post videos like this. They're telling on themselves. We're female wrestlers, and we make sure we do the squat test so our ass doesn't leave our gear. I'm not a female wrestler, and I absolutely don't have time for this. We're female wrestlers, and no, we don't have private accounts that we're talking to you privately on and asking for money. <laughs> I am. We're female wrestlers, and when we go to signings, men think they can touch us just because they paid for a ticket. We're female wrestlers, and we help fix each other's attires. You good? Yeah, I, I think I'm think yeah. getting better. I appreciate that, sister. Yeah. All right. I'm not a female professional wrestler, but I still have to make sure that my dress is appropriate for getting in and out of the ring. Does anyone have any, uh... Double stick tape? We're female wrestlers. I'm dating a fellow female wrestler, and no matter how many times you jump in my DMs or my comments, I still don't want you. We're female wrestlers, and if somebody calls me goddess or mother one more time, I'm gonna puke. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> I'm a female pro wrestler. People think the only reason I have a job is because of who I'm married to. It couldn't be the decade-long plus career and name I've created for myself. <laughs> Never. We're female wrestlers, and you constantly criticize how we look online. Do you know what that makes me do when I come to catering every week? Do you know? It makes me want to eat everything! <laughs> We're female wrestlers. Please don't find our house. Don't stalk us. Don't send us love letters. We don't want that shit. We're female wrestlers, and we sync up monthly. That means we have to check to see if our strings are showing. You're good. We're female wrestlers, and anytime we post that we have a boyfriend or a husband, <laughs> forget about it. Your falling goes down, and they call you ugly and not talented. Apparently, there was a new theme song made for Randy Orton that was never used. As Corey Brennan said on the Fightful podcast, the only thing I can confirm now is that when Randy Orton returned, they considered changing his music. At the time, I couldn't find out who produced it. It was supposed to be a Deaf Rebel produced remix of Voices. I saw someone say on Twitter, Randy probably turned around and said, that doesn't work for me, brother. That's essentially what happened. Randy was not having that theme. It was Randy, Triple H, and Michael Hayes. They played it through, and within 10 minutes of it being played through, one of my sources was, yeah, that's not being used. Talking about Tony Khan's decision to air the backstage footage of the altercation between CM Punk and Jack Perry, Kevin Nash noted on his Click This podcast. You know, it's his ball. He can kick it. He wants to kick it over onto the freeway, then kick it on the freeway. I've got no skin in that game, but it's just a very hard show to watch. It's very hard to get involved. It just feels so fragmented. In all honesty, man, I absolutely want AEW to succeed. Number one, I've got friends that work there, you know, in production and in all different aspects not just guys that are in front of the camera and i think there being a viable option is huge for the longevity of the business In an update on the sex trafficking lawsuit filed by former WWE employee Janelle Grant against the company and Vince McMahon, Ringside News wrote that Janelle Grant's legal representatives have moved to expunge statements attributed to Vince McMahon in his initial response to the lawsuit. Grant's legal team filed a motion on Wednesday seeking to strike down what they have characterized as inflammatory lies contained within McMahon's memorandum. According to Grant's filing, McMahon's statements were employed to propagate egregious falsehoods, imputing Janelle's moral character, evidently in a bid to intimidate and harass her into capitulation. The motion further articulates, McMahon's easily refuted lies have no place in this case. It was not necessary, reasonable, or responsible to use a public filing to impugn Janelle's moral character. Indeed, McMahon's desperate attempt to distract from the legal substance of the motion highlights its weakness and the weakness of his overall case. This court has inherent power to strike a party's filings. 
Accordingly, Janelle respectfully requests that the court exercise that power to strike the motion's preliminary statement in its entirety and admonish McMahon and his counsel that such statements have no place in civil litigation. In his response filed on Tuesday, McMahon sought arbitration, vehemently refuting Grant's allegations of sexual misconduct, abuse, and trafficking. By publicly filing her salacious, false, and defamatory complaint, plaintiff has brazenly and intentionally violated a binding contract to arbitrate. The complaint's outrageous claims of sexual abuse and coercion are pure fiction, plainly intended to garner publicity, and are flatly contradicted by plaintiff's own contemporary statements. Contrary to plaintiff's false allegations, plaintiff and defendant engaged in a consensual relationship during which defendant never coerced plaintiff into doing anything and never mistreated her in any way. Going over the health status of a WWE star, Ringside News wrote that, according to a report from Fightful Select, Jimmy Uso is currently sidelined due to an undisclosed injury. Details surrounding the injury and the duration of his absence remain scarce at this time. Jimmy's last in-ring appearance was at WrestleMania 40, where he faced his brother Jay in a match that ended in defeat. Following WrestleMania, during an episode of WWE SmackDown, he found himself on the receiving end of an attack orchestrated by Solo Sokoa and Tama Tonga, the newest addition to the Bloodline faction. In a recent interview with the Gorilla Position podcast, Jay expressed his disappointment over their performance at WrestleMania, attributing it to time constraints. With the possibility of a rematch looming, it appears that fans will have to wait until Jimmy has fully recovered from his injury. And this was your Pro Wrestling News Update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see y'all later.